One of the best ways to increase productivity in a React Native project is to automate the process of deploying builds you want to share internally in your team or with actual customers via the App Store. And you might be surprised at how easy it can actually be implemented when you have the right set of tools like GitHub Actions and EAS or Expo Application Services. In today's video, we will look at a few different ways that will make your life much more productive through the power of continuous deployment with EAS. If you choose to follow along with your own project, will have it fully configured in no time. If you're new here, like and subscribe and grab the full write-up from my website andreasludeman.com. So let's first get clear on what continuous deployment actually is. It's the practice of frequently making new builds and deploying them into production. And in our case, App Store and Play Store. So we're gonna automate this process with some pipelines so we don't need to do this manually, which is both more time consuming and error prone. And that's exactly what EAS and GitHub Action can help us out with. EAS is a set of cloud services provided by the Expo team that makes it very easy for us as app developers to actually make builds that we can test on our devices and deploy them to App Store and Play Store. So now onto the pipelines that we'll be setting up. We'll be following the Git flow branching strategy that involves using feature branches as well as two primary branches, the develop branch and the main branch. New code added to the code base needs to first be created in a feature branch, then from a pull request email merged into the develop branch and from here the develop branch can be merged into the main branch which is going to send the code into production. So we will essentially be building three different pipelines that we will be using throughout our daily workflow. So the first pipeline we will be building is one for deploying new builds whenever a new pull request is created making it very easy for our team members to test our code simply by scanning a QR code and testing the code in the Expo Go app. The next pipeline is going to run whenever our pull request is merged to the develop branch. So we always have a fresh build that our testers on the team can download on their various devices to search for new bugs introduced in the code base. And the last pipeline is going to be triggered whenever we merge the develop branch into the main branch. Here we want the pipeline to make a new build and deploy it to the App Store and Play Store. So let's begin by creating the pipeline that is triggered on pull requests to the develop branch. So first step is to head to export.dev and create a new account. And once you've done that, you will land on a dashboard where you can create a new project. So what we're doing here is to create a to-do app that we'll be working in. So now we've got some commands that we need to run in the terminal to set up and link our project to EAS. First, we'll need to sign into Expo with the username and password that we just created. Next, we will use the Expo CLI to create a new React Native Expo project. It's going to go ahead and install some dependencies for us. And now that it's fully set up, we will go ahead and link our code base with our EAS project using the ID. This is going to create an entry in our app.json file. Now we just need to set up our repository on GitHub. So we will go ahead and create a to-do app on GitHub and reference that remote repository in our code base. Now we will create the develop branch as per the git flow branch strategy. So now it's time to create our first GitHub action. We will do that by creating the .github folder with a workflows folder inside. And now we can create the first pipeline. We will call it publish pull requests.yml. But first, in order to trigger new builds on EAS with GitHub Actions, we need to create an Expo token. So we will go ahead and create an Access Token right here in the Project Settings under Access Tokens. As you can see, I already created one, but I will just show you that you can do it. So go ahead and generate a new token. And then go to your repository settings on GitHub and insert this as a secret. Now, first part of this new GitHub action is to give it a name and then we will specify when it should be triggered, which is on pull request to the develop branch. Then we will create a new job called publish, which runs on Ubuntu and has some permissions set up. Now we will set up the first steps of our GitHub action, including setting up Node.js and Expo. And here we have to specify a token, which is gonna be our Expo token that we enter in our repository secrets. Next a install dependency step using yarn. Now we will go ahead and set up the step to actually publish to Expo. First, we need to specify our environment using the node environment variable. 
This is only relevant if you're using .m or another environment variable framework to control your environment variable in your React Native app. Next, we will use the expo publish command and give it a few parameters, including non-interactive, so it doesn't take any user inputs, and a release channel as well, which is where we can find our published app. We'll name it using the generated GitHub run number. Once the app is published, the app is made available through a new link. We can transform this link into a QR code using the qrserver.com website. Now we want to add our QR code to the PR so our team members can easily test our code by scanning the QR code. We will use a third party GitHub action for this, which takes the default GitHub token in order to modify our pull requests. We specify the exact message where we will display the QR code, including a regular link that our team members can also use. Now let's go ahead and commit this new pipeline and push it. Now the new pipeline is created, it's time to create a new feature branch. We're gonna go ahead and create a feature branch for our new feature, which is a simple text change that we're gonna make in the app.js file. And now it's time to commit this change and push it to GitHub. What we wanna do now is go to GitHub and create a new pull request from our feature branch, which is gonna trigger the new GitHub action that we created. We need to make sure that the pull request is going towards the develop branch. And now we wanna change the default branch to the develop branch rather than the main branch. And also set up some branch protection for the developer branch. So developers on our team have to use feature branches and pull requests in order to make changes on the developer branch. Our GitHub action was triggered, so now we just have to wait until it completes. And there we go. A QR code was added to our pull request and we also have a working link straight to Expo. And we can go ahead and scan the QR code with the camera app on our phone and open the code in the Expo Go app and test out the changes from the PR. And as we can see here, the app is running and the text changed from our pull requests there. So now we've successfully set up a pipeline that makes it very easy for our team members to test our code when we create a new pull request simply by scanning the QR code. So now it's time to begin on the second pipeline, which is triggered whenever the pull request is merged to the develop branch. And here we want a new test build to be deployed that our testers can use to test the app. So let's go ahead and create our second pipeline called publish test build.yml. We will begin by giving it a name and trigger it on pushes to the develop branch. Now we create a job called publish and set up the exact same steps we used in the first pipeline to create the build. But the difference now is in the expo publish step where we set the environment to test and set the release channel to test, which is where we can find our test build. We now commit the new pipeline we created and push it to the develop branch. This triggers our new pipeline to run because of the latest change to the develop branch. And now the publish step completes, leaving us with a link where we can download the latest build and let our testers try out the app in its latest state. Moving on to the final pipeline, we want this pipeline to create a build that is deployed to the App Store and Play Store. For this, we need the EAS build and submit tool. So let's first set up the EAS build tool by running EAS build configure. This is gonna create a new file called eas.json. In this file, we first set up some options for the CLI tool, such as version. Then we configure the build command where we define how a build to production should be configured, including the name of the release channel, the method of distribution, and some specific settings for iOS and some environment variables for our app to use, such as what environment we are on, the version number and the build number. Finally, we will configure the submit command for how our apps are submitted to the App Store and Play Store. For iOS, we need to define the Apple ID we'll be using to submit the build to our App Store Connect account. 
the app ID where the app is gonna land, as well as our team ID. And lastly, we configure the Android build submission to the production track and disable automatically submitting our changes to review. Now we need to run EAS build for the first time manually in our terminal just to set up some configurations for how the IPA and APK files are gonna be created and code signed, including creation of provisioning profiles and key stores. So for this step, you need to run this command for yourself and go through the configurations as there is a lot of things here that I can't show you. Now, what you should end up with should be some credentials saved on your Expo project. Now onto setting up our deployment pipeline. We need to first configure an app specific password from the Apple developer website. This is gonna allow ES to actually deploy our app to App Store Connect. Now let's create the actual pipeline by creating a new file called publish prod build.yml. In here, we'll give it a name and set it to be triggered on pushes to the main branch. Next, we will configure the exact same first steps we've used in the previous pipelines, such as setting up node, expo, installing dependencies. But now we will define the EAS build step, including a few parameters such as the platforms we want to build for, the profile, which is a reference to the entry in the EAS.json file, where we have a production entry with all the configurations for production build. And lastly, that it's non-interactive, so it doesn't take any user input. Now we will add the EAS submit steps. First for App Store, where we will first give it the app specific password and set the platform to iOS and tell it to use the latest successful iOS build on EAS and again that it's non-interactive. And finally, the last EAS submit step for Android and to the Play Store with almost the exact same parameters. Now let's go ahead and commit and push this new pipeline to our repository. Now, whenever we merge our develop branch into the main branch, it will trigger a new production build that goes to EAS first, and then it's submitted to App Store and Play Store. So there we go. I've shown you a few effective ways to automate your entire deployment process. And if you implement these, your deployment workflow is about to skyrocket. Comment below which of these pipelines you will be setting up first. Now, having an automated deployment process is one thing, but there is a lot more potential with what you can automate to further increase your workflow. I'm sharing in my next video exactly how to auto-generate your React Native Apps network layer, including all the models you'll be using. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. I hope this video helped you and I will see you in the next one.